views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Take the leap with Rudy Racine as you listen to the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series. This show targets anyone looking to advance their careers and further develop their leadership skills. Rudy Racine is a certified coach, entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and the founder CEO of Higher Learners. In this show, Rudy will introduce listeners to professionals and executives in a variety of industries while discussing the challenges that tend to stand in the way of career growth and advancement. Learn how to craft your personal definition of success with the right mix of focus and motivation. Higher Learners is putting minds to work. What's up, everyone? I'm Rudy Racine, and you're listening to the Higher Learners podcast on Transformation Talk Radio every first and third Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Pacific, We discuss topics that help you sharpen your professional skills to get you to the next level in your career. Stay with us for this next hour as we discuss success and the five keys to personal and professional growth. Success and the five keys to personal and professional growth. You got me for the full hour, just me by myself, but we have some really good stuff uh, to talk about during this episode. I actually recently attended a Tony Robbins seminar and really Um, was inspired by a lot of what Tony Robbins talked about at the seminar. And the five keys to personal and professional growth were things that he touched on for his audience that really resonated with me. So in hearing what he shared, um, it helped me to craft some additional additional ideas and suggestions and thoughts that I wanted to share on this this episode. All right, so before we go into the five keys to personal and professional growth, uh, it is important that we touch on success. And many of you that listen to this show often may have heard me share this on previous episodes, but I gotta gotta bring it up again. And it is the importance of defining success. Uh, And it's also very important to identify or to to acknowledge that success is a subjective term. And what I mean by that is if I ask 100 people what does success mean to you? It's very likely that I'll get multiple responses. I might even get a hundred different responses because everyone is different. We're all living on this earth, but we all have different priorities, different things that are important to us. So when you think of success, it is important that you, for your personal success, your personal and professional success, you take the time to fully define exactly what you're looking for. All right. So Think about it this way. When you work for a company or any organization, the organization gives you their mission, they share their their values with you, and each employee is given a list of things uh, that they need to do in order to be considered successful. Uh, You are considered a top performing employee if you achieve A, B, C, and D. A successful manager will define success for their team, and a successful company will do the same for their employees. So it it makes me wonder why, as an individual, many individuals go into a year and they say, "This I want this to be the greatest year ever. Or they go into the week or even a day and just say, this is going to be my day. This is going to be my week. It's going to be the best week ever. But what does that mean, right? So best week ever, best. It's qualitative, right? So it's not fully defined. It's subjective. What is best? What does that mean? What needs to happen? in order for this to be the best day ever or the best week ever? How often do we take the time to fully set our intentions for the day, the week, or the year, uh, and really follow through? Um, I know there are a number of professional coaches out there that actually recommend that when you wake up in the morning, you define or you set your intentions for the day. You say, these are the three things that I wanna make sure I come out of this day achieving or accomplishing. Uh, and, and many coaches often recommend that you also, at the end of your day, 
recap or, or write down the things that you felt like you accomplished for the day. So a check-in at the beginning of the day and a check-in at the end of the day. So each of these things are highly recommended for your success. And you got you to gotta define success for yourself. If you don't do that, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. I actually, I did a workshop recently. And what I had the audience do was I gave them a, a bunch of puzzle pieces, right? So I gave them 500 puzzle pieces uh, for a puzzle that obviously had not been assembled yet. And I didn't show them what the puzzle was supposed to look like, right? So you got 500 puzzle pieces and you don't know what the puzzle is supposed to look like. And I told them, you know, I'm going to give you some time. You got to put the puzzle together. And each person in this seminar, they, they started assembling the puzzle on their own or, or, or with the team. They started assembling the puzzle. And, you know, I came back after five, 10 minutes of them attempting to assemble the puzzle. And I compared that to how most people, or not me not say most people, I say many people approach their lives and approach their day to day. You know, so the, the, the picture of what the puzzle is supposed to look like represents our goals and represents success. And so many of us go into a day, go into our year, you know, came into 2018 saying that this was going to be the best year ever, but they didn't know what that best year ever looked like. They didn't take the time to fully define it. So before we go into the five keys to personal and professional growth, I had to stress the importance of defining success. So before you really start to focus on these five keys that I'm going to share with you, I want you to sit down after this show, after the show airs, I want you to sit down and write out what are the three things that I'm trying to get out of this year, out of 2018, if you haven't already done that. And if you've done that already, if you already have your goals for 2018, then zoom in. What I mean by zoom in is Break that goal down into 12 months, into chunks, right? 12 months or four quarters. So what needs to happen in this quarter in order for me to move one step closer to my success or one step closer to my goal for the year? And if you've broken it down by quarter, break it down by month. Uh, what needs to happen this month? And then if you break it down by month, you know where I'm going. Break it down by week. Doing that will only set you up for success. And granted, we never, no one has all of the information, right? No one has all the information. So failure is actually information that helps you to improve. So even if you've set out one of the biggest goals you've ever set, and you've set this goal that really sparks fear in your minds and, and brings about anxiety, that's okay. You know, if in month one, you don't achieve what you've what you've set out to achieve in in that first month because just trying to move forward towards that goal as long as you're acting you're taking action uh if you're unsuccessful the information that you gather from taking that step forward is information that you can use to adapt your plan uh for the next 11 11 months or 10 months and obviously we're already in uh, the second quarter of 2018, but that doesn't mean you can't set a goal for the next year uh, between now and April 2019. So don't let the fact that you didn't start in January stop you from defining success for yourself. You can define success for the next 12 months. You can define success for the next six months. Do it for yourself, uh, but it is imperative that you do that, that you define success. Another piece on success. Your success does not need to match the definition of others. It is yours. It is what brings you fulfillment. It is what brings you satisfaction. It is what brings you happiness. Um, so just like su success is a subjective term, everything that I just listed beyond that, when I, met, when I, when I said fulfillment, happiness, those are also subjective terms that you need to take the time to fully define. Uh, and I know we often tend to allow others to define success for ourselves. Uh, we let our parents, we let our family members, we let our close friends uh, define what we should be doing to be successful. But I need you 
to take the time to officially define success. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back from break, we're going to talk about the five keys to personal and professional growth. So stay tuned with us. This is the Higher Learners Podcast on Transformation Talk Radio. When we come back, we're going to touch on the five keys to personal growth and professional growth. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Be you plus live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in the first and third Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. We are back on the Higher Learners Podcast with Rudy Racine, where every first and third Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time and 12 p.m. Pacific, we discuss topics to help you sharpen your skills and get you to the next level in your career. Today's show, we are talking about success and the five keys to personal and professional growth. And in our first segment, we talked about the importance of defining success. There are 24 hours in a day, and we know that it is important to define exactly what we're trying to get out of the day in order for us to really feel accomplished, fulfilled, and feel like we we achieved exactly what we wanted to achieve and we're moving closer to our goals. So without further ado, I'm going to share with you the five keys to personal and professional growth that I got from uh, the Tony Robbins Business Mastery Seminar. Now I'll tell you, uh, if you've never been to a Tony Robbins seminar, I strongly recommend going to one. This was probably one of the most intense uh, workshop seminars that I've ever attended. I felt like I gained so much value from the time that I spent there. And I took so many pages of notes, it's ridiculous. But this is what resonated me, resonated with me the most uh, during that seminar. It was these five keys that he shared. So the first key to personal and professional growth is feed your mind. Feed your mind. Now, these uh, keys, are they're not out of the ordinary. There is nothing crazy about it. Um, They're they're pretty simple, and it's all about execution. But what does he mean by feed your mind? Feed your mind is be mindful of what it is you are, what kind of information or what, what information you're consuming on a daily basis, right? So what are you reading What are you watching? What are you listening to daily? Uh, Especially when you have officially defined success. So if you've defined a goal for yourself, what are you reading that might help you to move closer to achieving that goal? 
it, it it's so it's so interesting to me that um many of us most human beings most most of us are attached to our cell phones or our smart device right so you wake up in the morning i, I i'm curious to know how many of my listeners use their cell phone as their alarm clock i know i do right and oftentimes my cell phone will will ring uh, when it's time for me to wake up, it's like 5.30 a.m., my alarm clock goes off, and I grab my cell phone to turn off the alarm clock, and I make the mistake of looking at my phone. So I, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me not to shut off my alarm clock without looking at the phone. But um, there's so many distractions that come about, right? So it, it distracts me, takes me away from, it already takes, takes away control of my day, right? So as far as feeding your mind is concerned, at the beginning of the morning, one thing that I, I've recently started to do is I, I, I purchased a Bluetooth speaker that I have in my house that plays in the bathroom when I'm getting ready for work, right? So I'm brushing my teeth, I'm in the shower, and I'm listening to uh, inspirational video from you know the, on YouTube. So I listen to things like Les Brown, uh, the Impact Theory show, um, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn. These are things that, or these are individuals that I listen to because they 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 get me motivated in the day and they they start my day off positively, right? So when you've officially defined success, when you exact when you know exactly what you're trying to get out of your day or your week, it's imperative that you also feed your mind with things that move you closer to that goal. So that could be the books that you're reading, uh, the radio shows or the music that you're listening to, or just the time that you're spending listening to something. Uh, how, how many of the hours or how many minutes in the day are you spending listening to or reading something that is helping you to move closer to your goal? And even if it's not a daily thing, right? If it's a weekly thing, think about the breakdown of your week. So if there are 24 hours in a day, uh, 24 times seven, I don't have a calculator in front of me, so I can't tell you how many hours are in a week, but you, you get my point. How many of those hours are dedicated to feeding your mind? And then think about the things that you're, you are listening to or that you are watching. If you're watching reality TV, if you're watching, um, any, any type of sitcoms. I know that there are some sitcoms, there are some m- movies uh, that, that are empowering, they're motivating, they're inspiring. Uh, I know sometimes the news, uh, albeit there are some, some positive stories on the news sometimes, watching the news can be extremely draining and frustrating, right? Um, and it's, although you want to be in the know with what's going on in, in, in your day-to-day and in your neighborhood and in your life and in the world, um, the amount of time that you're spending watching the news might not be feeding your mind. It might not be encouraging you and empowering you to move closer to uh, your goals. So key number one, feed your mind. Leads me to key number two of the five keys to personal and professional growth. Key number two, train your body. Train your body. So Many of us and many of the listeners listening to the show today might have a full-time job that they work and they they work 40 hours a week. Some work 50 hours a week. Some might be working over 60 hours a week. And, you know, you go to work, you put in a lot of time at work, and then you go home and it's it's draining. You're you're tired. You're exhausted. And many of us know, uh, you know, we want to work out. We want to exercise. We want to start to do more. And it it can be a frustrating feeling. And we don't feel like we have the energy to to do that, to go to the gym and to work out and to exercise more frequently. And I'll tell you, training your body and and exercising, that actually will result in more energy throughout the day. If you you work out in the morning time, oftentimes you'll be able to get to work. And, And those of you that work out in the morning and you exercise in the morning, you do something, you, you can probably agree or you will probably agree that when you get to work, you have a little bit more energy. You feel a little bit more energized because you've exercised. So training your body is so important. And, 
And training your body goes beyond exercise. It actually, it actually includes what you're eating. So I can, I have a confession. I have a, a love affair with Domino's pizza. All right. So every so often I'll order a pie of Domino's, I'll get some wings. And when I have Domino's, it never fails. After I have a couple of slices and I eat some of the wings, I am extremely drained. I don't want to do anything. The st- I don't know if it's the starch, if it's the sodium, what it is. But when I have Domino's pizza, and no, no, no knocks at Domino's. I love your pizza. <laughs> but when it comes to doing work and moving closer to my goals, I know to steer clear of Domino's, right? So my reward for moving closer to my goals is I might get a, a, a pie from Domino's or some, some wings. Um, but outside of that, I know that if I eat too much Domino's pizza, I am not going to be able to move. Uh, I'm going to pass out and I'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night thirsty. Uh, so you, you see, I'm talking about it. Like it happens to me often. Um, I'm very familiar with the Domino's hangover. So training your body is extremely important. When you are, when you've defined success, define the success that you're looking to gain from your year. Because if you know that eating something or uh, you know drinking drinking beer or what have you will result in you feeling drained and feeling less engaged in whatever you want to do or feeling lethargic, then you know all of us we have 24 hours in a day, and that might just take away some of the hours. So. Many of us go to sleep. We sleep six to eight hours a day. Uh, and if we have something that that drains us and that makes us feel lethargic, that might take away some of the hours that we have to work towards something that we're passionate about. All right. So if we're not working towards our goals during the hours that we do have in a day, eating something that's going to have you drained probably isn't the best thing. So you want to train your body. And the last point I'll make on training your body is run your race, all right? So I am a runner. I run, I've run the New York City Marathon, I ran it in 2016, I'll be running it again in 2018. And two years ago when I was training for my first marathon, I remember running a 15K race, all right? And this story uh, may resonate with some of the listeners. So I'm running this 15K race and I was running with a group of friends And we started the race out and I was trying my best to keep up with my friends. I I was trying, they trained more than I I had. They were in better shape than I had. And I found myself struggling to keep up with my friends. Uh, In addition, I felt frustrated because I found that there were so many people running the race and they were ahead of me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, you know, this person, they look like they're twice my age, but they're kicking my butt. You know, they're, 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 they're holding their own and I'm over here struggling. Um, so the reason I share that story is because something that I realized after I let my friends go ahead, I was like, you know what, go ahead. I'm going to run my race. You guys go ahead. I'll meet you at the finish line. The thing that I realized was I was so focused on the people that were ahead of me that I didn't take the time to take it to, to appreciate the fact that I was so far ahead in the race. So what do I mean by that? I was so focused on the, the, the hundreds of people ahead of me that I didn't realize that there were so many people behind me that might be looking at me with the same feelings of, of frustration and feelings of wanting to be as fast as I was. Because although I wasn't that fast, I was faster than a few. I was faster than some. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'll wrap up this thought about training your body. But, um, I want to hammer the point home of running your race and I will take that. We'll, we'll take a break. Um, and when we come back, we will continue to discuss the five keys to personal and professional growth. Stay tuned. And thank you for listening to the higher learners podcast. We'll be right back. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to affect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics, 
Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show, joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down, Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. The truth is funny. Shift happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. We are back on the Higher Learners Podcast with Rudy Racine, where every first and third Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time and 12 p.m. Pacific, we discuss topics that help you sharpen your skills to get you to the next level in your career. Today, we're talking about success and the five keys to personal and professional growth. So first segment, I talked to you about defining success. We, we, we stressed or I stressed the importance of taking the time to really outline and define what it is that you are trying to get out of your day, what it is you're trying to get out of your year, your month, what have you. Define what success means to you. Uh, Don't rely on your friends, your family, uh, your significant other to define success for you because oftentimes that may be what might not be leaving you fulfilled. It's important for you to figure out what it is that is fulfilling so that you can define success. Then we talked about the first key, which was feed your mind. You know, so reading books, listening to motivational messages, maybe on YouTube, listening to uh, radio stations that might have positive, inspirational, and influential messages, watching movies. Listen, Will Smith movies, I love them. The Will Smith YouTube channel is awesome. It's, it's something that inspires me daily. So feeding your mind with messaging that encourages you and inspires you to take steps closer to your goal. And then we talked about training your body. Uh, and training your body means um, eating right and exercising. And I left off in the last segment with a story about running my race, right? Or running your race. So I talked about how for the first three miles of this race, I was spending so much time, exhausting so much energy, trying to keep up with my friends until I realized that it wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to finish this race if I kept up at their pace. So I let them go ahead. And uh, it was at that moment that I realized that I was spending so much time focusing on staying with them that I didn't appreciate the progress that I'd made. And I didn't appreciate the fact that I was ahead of so many other people, right? So running is actually synonymous with life. Think about it, right? So let's say hypothetically you've defined success. You know exactly what your goals are, right? That's the finish line, or at least that's the finish line of this race. Until you achieve that goal, then you you set a new goal and that's a new finish line. But for the case of the, for the sake of this example, finish line is your goal. So many people take so much time focusing on getting to the finish line and looking at the people ahead of them. They're comparing. We compare ourselves to the people ahead of us, the people that we aspire to be like, right? And in doing that, we often don't take enough time to appreciate how far we've come. We don't take the time to appreciate the fact that 
there are other people that are inspired by our progress. We've come very far. And although we may not be at the finish line where we would like to be, it is so important that we stop and we take the time to appreciate our progress. Doing that will also make you feel fulfilled and it'll be inspiring and motivating and encouraging for you to continue to move forward. If you take the time to really express gratitude for how far you've come uh, and really outline the things that you have now that maybe you didn't have last year or the progress that you've made this week that you didn't make last week, and if not broken by week, by, by month or by year, the Rudy Ray scene from 2016 is extremely different than today's 2018 version of Rudy Ray scene. Uh, and it's not, that's not to say that I'm, I'm a different person. It just, it's just to say that I've grown significantly. I've learned from every single experience that I've been in. So oftentimes we don't take the time to appreciate the growth and the progress that we've made. So all of this, the, the point I'm making in the train your body segment or, or key is if you want to start to train your body, don't feel like you have to go in the gym and bang out a two-hour workout. Don't feel like you have to run a half marathon or a, a, a 10K or even a 5K. You don't have to do that. Run your race. The funny story is in that, in that example that I gave you, when I was trying to keep up with my friends, yes, they were kicking my butt at the beginning of the race, but this was a 15K race, which is approximately, I want to say like nine miles. So it was at mile three that I couldn't keep up, but I kept going. And ironically, I passed a few of them along the way because they were going a little too fast at first. And I was able to maintain a steady pace to finish the race before them. So now I didn't finish before everybody. So shout out to teamwork, uh, my, my run group. Um, they, th there were several of them that beat me or finished the race before me, but it, it wasn't about who won, who won the race or who finished first. The fact that we all finished is what I'm stressing to all of you listeners today. Run your own race. Don't get too caught up focusing on the other people around you. Appreciate the progress that you've made. And, you know, I shared this story at a recent seminar. And I remember one of the attendees in the audience said, well, what if you're the last person in the race? What, you know, I, you can't really appreciate, you know, being ahead of anybody if you're the last person in the race. And I said, you know, it's funny that you say that because there are thousands of people at these races on the sidelines watching the runners. And I want you to think about how inspirational seeing that person that is persevering, that's still in last place, that's still persevering, trying to push forward to finish the race. How much does that motivate somebody on the sidelines? Put yourself in the shoes of someone on the sidelines watching a race and you see someone persevering the last person in any race pushing forward and crossing that finish line. That might inspire someone to choose to run a race the following week, the following year, or the following month. So if you're that person and you feel like you're in last place, you may be in last place in the race. You might be the, the, the lowest performer on your team, but your perseverance, your effort, it's inspiring to someone. So take advantage of that and appreciate that. Appreciate the effort that you put forth and, and focus on improving the results. All right. So I think I've hammered home uh, the train your body. The la last point, actually, I'll make one more point on train your body. Shout out to all of the listeners that are still listening to me. I appreciate you staying with me as I ramble on about training your body. But life is made up of habits and rituals. So I saw this in a YouTube video and that also resonated with me. So I had to share it, right? So life is made up of habits and rituals. And when it comes to training your body and also feeding your mind, what are your habits and what are your rituals? Which, uh, what are your habits and what are your rituals? Sorry about that. Um, when you wake up in the morning, what are you doing that is helping you to move forward towards achieving your goal or achieving you know, your, your perfect body type? Your habits and rituals are the, the keys to moving you closer to that success. So if you can alter one or more of those habits that you have, your daily habits, your weekly habits, if you can alter one or more of those rituals that you have, 
your likelihood of achieving the goal that you've set for yourself has increased exponentially. Your habits and rituals. Pay attention to your habits and pay attention to your rituals. All right, I'm going to stop hammering this point home and we're going to move on to the third key, the third key to professional and personal growth. The third key is find a mentor. All right. So I, I want to I want to give a, a shout out. I keep shouting people out. I don't I don't normally do this on the podcast, but there are some amazing people out there that I think uh, deserve attention. So a friend of mine, uh, Bertrand Gervais, he is actually the author of a book called Who's in Your Top Hive? Who's in Your Top Hive? A book about mentorship. And the key is find a mentor. So that's why I wanted to to plug uh, plug Bertrand Gervais. Uh, and his book, Who's in Your Top Hive? Because it talks about the importance of finding a mentor. When you have defined success for yourself, it is imperative, it's so important that you find a mentor. You find someone that you can talk to, that you can bounce ideas off of, that you can share um, share your goals with, and and, and, and someone that, that challenges you on your goals. So not someone that's always gonna agree with you, um, you know, not a yes man or a yes woman, uh, a mentor or a good mentor. Sometimes a good mentor is not someone that's that's a yes man or a yes woman. That's not somebody that you want. Um, on the flip side, though, you also don't want a mentor that is completely pessimistic and is constantly bashing your ideas. A successful and effective mentor is someone that challenges your ideas, but also champions your thoughts, champions you when you are down. They believe in you more than sometimes they believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Uh, but when they feel like you might be getting in over your head, they might point out certain things that you might be missing. You notice how I said they might point out some things that you might be missing instead of them saying that you can't do it, right? So you never want to have somebody that says you can't do something, right? Your mentor is your champion. They are the person that you can talk to about your goals share your progress, discuss your challenges, listen to recommendations, and and more importantly, oftentimes, there's somebody that has achieved the level of success that you are aspiring to achieve, or they're living the, the life that you are looking to live, all right? If you have difficulty finding a mentor, maybe you don't have, a, you don't have the ability to find a mentor within your place of work. Uh, if you're not currently working right now and you're struggling to find a mentor, I encourage you, and I've plugged this a few times, but I encourage you to to, to, to revert to uh, social media. Now, don't beat me up too much on this, but the reason I say social media is because there are some amazing people with some amazing profiles on Instagram, uh, on YouTube, YouTube and Instagram specifically, that share some really motivational and inspirational messages. So, if you can't find a mentor that you can use to to bounce ideas off of, at the very least, find someone that you can watch on social media that inspires you to act and inspires you to move closer to your goals. All right. So I, I actually like to say that Tony Robbins is one of my mentors. Les Brown is one of my mentors. Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Will Smith. Those are all people that I listen to regularly that give me messages of motivation that inspire me to act and move closer to my goals. So those are mentors for me. Although we may not have a conversation, I may not bounce my ideas off of them. They are are people that whenever I hear them speak, whenever I talk about the thing, whenever I hear them talk about the things that are going on well for their lives or in their lives or in their business, they, they inspire me to act. So we've talked about three keys. We're gonna take another quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about the fourth and fifth keys. So Thank you again for for tuning in to the Higher Learners podcast. We will be right back. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the five keys to personal and professional growth. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Winning at the game of money. 
Lynn Brown is now offering Full Spectrum Finance, a progressive 12-month program that will help you to navigate through the mechanics of financial expansion. Finally, a financial planner who looks at the full spectrum of money and abundance, engage you in the mental, physical, and energetic aspects of finance. This is Full Spectrum Finance. Are you ready to get into it? For more information, go to FullSpectrumFinance.com. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio. Featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net. Tune in each Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. Tune in to Synergenetic Living Radio, where Rick and Grace Paris discuss the synergenetic way of life, what it means to truly change your perspective in life, what it means to take control of your life and manifest your true desires. For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, check out SynergeneticLiving.com. Get clear on the life you desire and the current life you are creating and what is between the two. Synergenetic Living, living life loud. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. We are back on the Higher Learners Podcast with Rudy Racine, where every first and third Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time and 12 p.m. Pacific, we discuss topics to help you sharpen your skills, to help you get to the next level in your career. Today, we are talking about success and the five keys to personal and professional growth. Uh, In this episode, we've talked about the first three keys so far, and we talked about the importance of defining success. Uh, Just a reminder, the first key Feed your mind. The second key, train your body. The third key, find a mentor. And the fourth key now, now we're going to talk about the fourth and fifth key in this segment. So the fourth key is a result of a story that Tony Robbins shared at his seminar, right? So he talked about the importance of proximity. And he said, proximity is power. So what he meant by that and what I what I got from that was your network is powerful. And it's important to focus on building and strengthening your network. The stronger your network is, the more opportunities that present themselves to you, right? So a a story that I can share um, that kind of illustrates the the power of this example is I once served as the director of career services at a college in New Hampshire. And I remember having a student of mine that was in school for medical assisting. And this student of mine, she was still in school and she talked about how she was working at Home Depot while in school and she happened to help a a doctor at one of the local hospitals in uh, New Hampshire, in in Southern New Hampshire, in Manchester, New Hampshire, right? So this student tells me the story. She says how, you know, she spent some time with this this doctor at, at Home Depot. She was helping him find some stuff. He was renovating his home. And while she was helping him, she was sharing, you know, what she was in school for. He, he asked her about herself and she said, you know, she's in school for medical assisting. She has aspirations of, of continuing her education uh, to work in medicine. And, you know, after servicing this, this customer, when, um, you know, he was checking out, he gave, her a, he gave her a card. He said, here's my card. I work at this hospital in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, when you are done with your program, give me a call, right? And for for those of you that are familiar with the medical assisting program or with medical assisting programs, you often have to do an an externship or you have to do an an externship at a medical practice in order for you to complete your degree or diploma, right? So now that story that that student shared with me, it resonated with me because think about it. She was working at Home Depot. 
what are the odds that she meets a doctor that could potentially hire her while working at Home Depot? It's not impossible, but the odds are not as high as if if they were if you were volunteering at a hospital or if you went to a networking event that had all medical professionals. Think about it. So if I'm volunteering at a hospital now uh, and I'm volunteering on the weekends, what are the odds that I bump into a doctor that might potentially be able to hire me? Think about it. A little, little higher than if you're working at Home Depot, right? And no, no knock on working at Home Depot. The point I'm trying to illustrate is it's important for you to surround yourself or put yourself in situations where you can bolster your network, strengthen your network, and, and essentially that proximity, the closeness that you have with people in the industry that you're trying to grow in, the greater your network is, the greater the opportunity that presents itself. So think about how that translates in your industry or in your line of work and what you do. If you have goals for this year or for the next six months, whatever your, whatever success is for you, because once again, you're, you will define success at the end of the show if you haven't already done it. Um, where do you need to put yourself? Where, where do you need to spend time to surround yourself with people that could potentially help you, all right? People that, that could potentially give you advice, but also influence the direction that you're going positively. Think about that. What professional organizations exist that might help you move forward or move you closer to your goals? Proximity is power. And that, that's, that's really one of the most important keys uh, in, in the five keys of personal and uh, five keys towards personal and professional success, right? Proximity is power. Think about your current day-to-day life and where you might be spending your time and what opportunities exist for you to spend time with uh, individuals or professionals within your industry. All right. So we talked about key number four, proximity of power. Proximity is power. I can talk about that for hours, but I don't have all all of that time. So key number five, my friends, is add massive value for the people around you. Add massive value for the people around you. So I talked about that the previous key was surrounding yourself with people that might be able to help you. But in everything and anything that you do, you always want to try your best to add value to the people around you. Because at the end of the day, your brand, your reputation is the most valuable thing that you own. So if you are known as someone that consistently adds value to the people around them, then that will in itself also create opportunities for you. All right. So I like to say that karma is only bad when you do bad things. But if you do great things for people, if you add value for the people around you, That karma is amazing. It's awesome. The people that you inspire, the people that you influence, the people that you impact, they don't forget. Some do, but they will. They will eventually remember. And if you do this enough, if you impact enough people, then you don't need to take score. You don't need to count it. Just make sure that every interaction that you have, you are working to add value to the people around you. Aim to serve. That servant leadership, it's no joke. As a leader, when you aim to serve your teams, when you aim to serve and add value to the people around you and the people in your business, it comes back. It pays you back in dividends. So the last key is just add massive value. I, I, can, I can harp on this for, for hours as well, but it's important that you establish a brand, establish a reputation where you are known for adding value. Enterprise Rent-A-Car, one of their founding values, their their first founding value is your brand is the most valuable thing that you own. I learned that when I first started working with with Enterprise Rent-A-Car and it stuck with me for over 15 years. Over, has it been 15? Yeah, wow, I'm getting old. (laughs) But it stuck with me. So it's it's important and I wanna share it with all of you listeners because your brand is the most valuable thing that you own. Your reputation it's, it sticks with you. So if you have a good reputation, good things will happen and good things will come to you. So I've gone over the five keys to personal and professional success 
Feed your mind, train your body, find a mentor, proximity is power, and add massive value. The last thing I'll touch on, so we talked about defining success. Um, You've defined success. You have a goal, right? So that's the outcome that you're looking to achieve. Another thing that you want to do to move you closer to achieving that goal is you want to determine what the purpose is. So you guys remember that song from the the 90s, Naughty by Nature? Uh, You're down with OPP? So in that song, OPP stood for other people's property. OPP for me stands for outcome, purpose, process, right? So what is the outcome you're looking to achieve? What, what's the goal that you are looking to achieve? So once you've identified what your outcome is, the next thing is the purpose. What is the why behind that? Get in tune with the feelings that you would feel if you achieve the goal, if you achieve the outcome that you've defined for yourself. So that's the purpose, you know, and and this is something that I also got from Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins talks about the RPM, rapid planning method, right? So this is very similar to the rapid planning method in that you have to find out what the purpose is for whatever you want to achieve. Why do you want this? Who will it impact? How will you feel when you achieve it? When you've been able to take the time to outline exactly what your purpose is, the next step is the process, the how, right? But you don't want to start with the how. You never want to start with the how. If you, if you start with the how, how are you going to achieve this goal? How am I going to do this? Then you're going to, your growth is going to be stunted because oftentimes we don't know how yet. We have no idea how we're going to achieve these goals. Think back to a goal that you set for yourself that when you set it, you had no idea how you were going to get this done. But you, you were like, you know what? I'm going to make this happen. Somehow, some way, I'm going to make this happen. And the reason you set that goal was because you knew that not only would this change your life, not only would it bring satisfaction and fulfillment and, 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 and gratitude, but you knew that it was going to not only impact you, but it was going to impact others. So your purpose was defined. Your why was defined. Now, when you had your why defined, you were able to figure out how. You might have done taken a baby step. So it, 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 it's all about running your race then, right? So taking those baby steps will eventually get you to achieving your goal. So now that I've shared your five keys to personal and professional growth, uh, in defining your goals, you also want to focus on outcome, purpose, and process. So I'm going to wrap up now. Uh, I want to thank you all for your time and your attention. I want to thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check me out uh, on Instagram and on Facebook. So on Facebook, you can find me at Higher Learners. Higher Learners is spelled H-I-R-E Learners. That's L-E-A-R-N-E-R-S. You can find me on Instagram at Higher Learners. You can find me on Twitter at Higher underscore Learners. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about me, Rudy Racine, the founder of Higher Learners, the career and leadership coaching company, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash Rudy Racine. I also encourage you to check out my website, www.higherlearners.com. Check in with me, reach out to me. If there are things that you want to talk about or you want me to talk about on a future episode, reach out. If you know somebody that would be an, an, an If you know somebody that would be an amazing guest, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Shoot me an email at rracine at higherlearners.com. I want to thank you all for the time and the attention that you gave me again. And I'll leave you with a quote, a John Lennon quote that resonated with me. It says, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, then it's not the end. Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, then it's not the end. Keep pushing, keep trying to be great, and go after your goals and your dreams. With that, my friends, take care. Have a wonderful day. You've been listening to the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series, defining success and putting minds to work with Rudy Racy. Rudy will help you craft your personal definition of success, offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals. Take the leap. With the right mix of focus and motivation, anything can be achieved. To learn more, tune in every first and third Monday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern.
to download this podcast. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. 